The way I figured if I'm going to get serious about these Star Trek videos, and seeing as how this is the third one that I've done in just under a year, I think my commitment to the project speaks for itself. I need to be willing to challenge my own beliefs, including one I've held on to for over 20 years. Catherine Janeway, commanding officer of the USS Voyager and lead protagonist of the series set aboard that ship, cleverly titled Star Trek Voyager, is the worst starship captain ever. Or at least that's what I've thought low these many years. Could I be wrong about Janeway? Voyager was never my favorite Star Trek show. In fact, Voyager was my least favorite Star Trek show. <laughs> but it's been off the air for 16 years, so maybe it's time to give it another chance, which I'm going to do starting with Captain Janeway in this video, which I'm calling, Is Captain Janeway Actually a Great Captain? One of the main reasons I've considered Janeway such a terrible captain all these years is my belief that she allowed her ship and her crew to be stranded in the remote Delta Quadrant for very questionable reasons, which she then immediately forgot about. But is that actually what happened? It's been a long time since I sat down and watched the first episode of Star Trek Voyager, so I guess I should start there. Okay, so here's what happens in Voyager's pilot episode in a nutshell. It begins with this opening crawl explaining who the Maquis are and setting up the action, which I thought was cool. It reminded me of Star Wars. Though some Star Trek fans tell me I'm not supposed to like it when Star Trek feels like Star Wars, which is why they don't like the J.J. Abrams movies. But if it's not okay for the movies to remind me of Star Wars, why is it okay for Voyager to remind me of Star Wars? Or is that not okay either? I don't know. And frankly, I don't want to know. I'm not here to dick around wrestling with irrelevant nerd questions. I'm here to determine if Janeway is actually a great captain. So after the opening crawl, there's a teaser where we meet Chakotay, Belana Torres, Tuvok, and I think that's Ayala? Doesn't matter, he's not important. Anyway, they're all in the Maquis, and they're running from a Cardassian ship. They attempt to escape by flying into the Badlands, a region of space composed entirely of really terrible CGI. They manage to elude the Cardassian ship, but then there's a big Star trek -y wave that overtakes them from behind, and whoosh, they're gone. After the opening credits, we fade in on a Federation penal colony in New Zealand, and hey, look, it's Nick Locarno, the leader of Nova Squadron. Last I heard, he'd just been expelled from Starfleet Academy. I wonder what he did to get thrown in... Oh wait, never mind. Here's Captain Janeway, and it turns out he's not Nick Locarno. He's Tom Paris, a person who looks and acts exactly like Nick Locarno. This was not the last time Voyager did this, by the way. In Season 3, they introduced Ensign Vorik, a Vulcan who works in engineering, who looks and sounds exactly like Ensign Torik, who appeared in the Next Generation episode, Lower Decks. And in perhaps the most egregious example, also in Season 3, they encountered this alien species that looks a lot like the Borg, and is even called the Borg, but can't possibly be the Borg, because the Borg were awesome, formidable, nearly unbeatable antagonists, and these dipshits can barely fly their ships without blowing themselves up. And if they're Borg, why are they using control panels? They're a hive mind, neurally linked to each other and their ship. Why would they need to push buttons or look at monitors? The ship thinks and it moves. Who did this? So Janeway tells Nick, I mean Tom, that she has a job for him. Apparently, Tom was part of the Maquis for about five minutes before he was caught and punished for joining a violent separatist group by being sent to beautiful New Zealand. And since he has the inside dope on the Maquis, Janeway got permission to take Tom out of the prison camp so he can help her find the Maquis ship that we saw vanish in the Badlands during the teaser. Seems that her chief of security was on board, working undercover. The deal is this, if Tom helps Janeway find the missing Maquis ship, then when the mission is over, he's free to go do whatever he wants. And Tom's like, sure, what else am I going to do? Remain here in the splendid earthly paradise of New Zealand? No thank you, let's go fly into a plasma storm. 
And after some more table setting, including a stopover at Deep Space Nine, where Paris flirts with a woman who'll be dead soon, reenacts the reveal of the Enterprise from Star Trek The Motion Picture, and meets Harry Kim by saving him from getting ripped off by Quark, that's exactly what happens. Voyager flies into the Badlands to look for the Maquis ship, gets swept away by the same special effect that we saw before, and finds itself on the other side of the galaxy in the Delta Quadrant, which is unexplored by the Federation. Oh, and every member of the ship's senior staff whose name isn't in the opening credits is killed, including Janeway's first officer, who apparently thinks brace for impact means stagger around in a blind panic so you die. Long story short, the ship was brought to this part of the galaxy by this super powerful alien called the Caretaker, who is dying and has been grabbing people from different parts of the galaxy for months, hoping to find someone genetically compatible so he could sire offspring, who could then take over for him after he's gone and protect this species, the Ocampa, who live in an artificial biosphere beneath the surface of a nearby planet. A bunch of other stuff happens. They turn on the holographic doctor to replace the dead human one. The Voyager finds the Maquis crew. Both crews are missing people, so they team up to find them. They meet Neelix and Kess. They run into the Kazon, who are basically Klingons trying to make it on a low income. I have to say, having just watched it for the first time in a long time, it's a pretty good episode, especially for a pilot. But this isn't a review of the episode. This is an evaluation of Janeway's competency as a captain, and her moment of truth comes near the end of the episode, right after the caretaker dies. Tuvok is like, hey, I found the thing he used to bring us here, and I think I can use it to send us home. But Janeway is like, yeah, but if we leave, then the Kazon will just take control of this technology and use it to attack the Okampa, and that's exactly what the caretaker was trying to prevent. So I think we should destroy the caretaker's array and stay here instead. And Tuvok says, oh, okay, hey, I'm relieving you of command because based on what you just said, you're obviously not fit to be in charge right now. Okay, okay, Tuvok doesn't actually say that. What he actually says is, instead of shooting the array from our ship and stranding ourselves on this side of the galaxy, why don't we plant time bombs on the array so we can destroy it and still use it to send ourselves home? And Janeway says, Tuvok, that is a great idea. Why didn't I think of that myself? Just kidding, she blows it up and traps the ship in the Delta Quadrant. But she was making a noble sacrifice though, right? She was choosing to destroy the array and remain in the Delta Quadrant to protect the Ocampa, who were gonna run out of power in the next five years and be forced to the surface where they'd be easy prey for the ruthless and desperate Kazon. Which is why Janeway remains in orbit around the planet, guarding the Ocampa against any Kazon threats while she and her crew help them to build up their defenses and gradually prepare to expand their society beyond the underground habitat so that when their power reserves are exhausted, they'll be able to... Oh, that's right. She immediately sets a course for home and abandons the Ocampa never to return. See, that's how I remembered it. I went into this hoping that there was something that I'd forgotten, maybe something that my 15-year-old self had missed the first time around, something that would enable me to view Janeway as something other than a reckless fuck-up who stranded her entire crew 70,000 light-years from Federation space for no good reason. But there's nothing. Janeway blows up the caretaker array to protect the Ocampa from the Kazon, and then she just leaves. She doesn't even stop by the planet on her way out to say, oh, by the way, uh, the caretaker's dead and we blew up his technology, so maybe start conserving energy and preparing to defend yourselves against the Kazon? Just a friendly heads up. Okay, bye. I mean, sure, she destroys the array so the Kazon can't use it to harm the Okampa, but they've still got, you know, guns and ships. And so the balance shifts. We rendezvous with Rochambeau, consolidate their gifts. We can end this war in Yorktown, cut them off at sea, but... For this to succeed, there's someone else we need. I know, Hamilton, he's... The point is, Janeway completely negates her own reason for stranding the ship in the Delta Quadrant within a few hours of doing it. And as a critic, I realize this is a product of bad writing. The creators of Voyager wanted the show to be about a ship lost on the other side of the galaxy looking for a way home, not a ship lost on the other side of the galaxy protecting a helpless species against the Klingons of the Ozarks, but it reflects poorly on Janeway nevertheless. 
Instead of a captain placed in an impossible situation who makes a decision to sacrifice her only way home for the good of a people in need, she comes across as someone who shoots tricobalt devices first and asks questions later. And that's a shame, because in other ways, this and subsequent episodes do a good job of establishing Janeway as intelligent, capable, courageous, compassionate. Everything Star Trek fans have come to expect in our captains. And for as flawed as it is, the decision to destroy the caretaker array rather than use it to get home does show us that Janeway isn't willing to sacrifice innocent lives for her own convenience. Or at least that's her intention. And as intentions go, it's a pretty admirable one. I don't think anyone would want to serve aboard a starship commanded by someone who was willing to let innocent people die just to get to their preferred outcome. We see this trait surface again in another first season episode, Phage, where aliens steal Neelix's lungs, and Janeway decides not to steal them back because they've already been given to someone else who needed them, and she's not willing to take them back because that would mean killing the recipient. She's not willing to take one life in order to save another, even if the other is her friend and crewmate. Whether you agree or disagree with her decision, you have to admire her for remaining true to her principles. And shit, but later on she kills Tuvix because she'd rather have Tuvok and Neelix back. God damn it, Kathy. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. By the way, I did actually watch the first episode of Star Trek Voyager for the first time in a long time to prepare for this. And the fun part is, you can watch the first episode of Star Trek Voyager with me by going to my channel on Riff.tv, which if you haven't heard about it, is this very cool website that allows people to live stream themselves watching shows and movies on Netflix and giving a running commentary or making jokes, riff tracks style. All you need is your own Netflix subscription and it automatically syncs everything up so you can either watch it live as it's being streamed out the first time or you can watch the archived version and you can go to my channel and check out my riff of the first episode of Star Trek Voyager. You can also check out riffs that I made of a few episodes of MacGyver and I'll be adding new riffs and different shows and different episodes in the future. So check out my channel on Rift.tv. It's linked in the description of this video. Also, if you enjoy these Star Trek videos that I do and you have some idea that I could use for a future video, I have quite a few ideas stockpiled for future videos in this series, but if there's some nerdy Star Trek question or some weird inconsistency or just something about Star Trek that you think would be fun and would lend itself to this format that I do these videos in, uh, feel free to suggest it in the comments. I'd love to hear any ideas that you folks might have as to what I could do with this series, with these kinds of videos in the future. So please don't be shy. Make a suggestion if you have a good one. And as always, please like, share, subscribe to this channel if you're not subbed already, and please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Steve Shives to become a patron of this channel for as little as $1 a month, and $1 a month helps me out tremendously you have no idea but if you are able and if you think I'm worth it and you want to pledge at a higher level if you pledge five dollars a month or ten dollars a month or even more there are special additional perks that you can take advantage of it's all explained on my patreon page that's also linked in the description box so please do consider becoming a patron and supporting this channel and helping me continue to make these videos and also you know pay bills and buy food and stuff thank you all again so much for watching and I'll see you next time.